Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So I'm back in my home state of Minnesota, and you know, I'll tell you, I've been friends with Brad Basinger for almost a decade. You guys may know him from Facebook or wherever you may know him, or maybe you haven't even been introduced to him yet, but you're about to be, because what Brad has built in an apartment in his home is not just the coolest herp room I've ever seen built by one person, it's actually an entire herp apartment. I'm really excited to show you guys Brad Basinger's Herp apartment and what he has built by hand by himself. This is going to be an amazing video. It's really cold out here. It's actually freezing out here. I don't know why I didn't film this intro inside. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. So this is Brad Basinger. I know, Brad, I have been after you for years to come over here and film what you have built here. So we're going to start in this room, and there's several other rooms that we've got to get through, but this is the salamander room. Yes. Yeah. So this room is all cooled down right now because it's winter time. Uh, it's probably about 40 degrees. Yeah, it's right chilly now. in here. Yeah. <laughs> and everything's just kind of, I'll try and see if we can get one of the... Uh, yeah. The, and, and what do I hear bubbler. screwing up my audio there? Oh, oh that's yeah, the bubbler. Yeah, there, yeah, that's the bubbler. I got All the right. big bubbler. So these are Qualbari. They are from the mountains of California. I've got a group of five of them in here and they are probably my favorite salamanders ever. So even at 40 degrees, they still come out and eat. I can see why they're your favorites. Yeah, they are, and I don't know if you can see it, but you see there's holes here and here. Yep. They have a whole intricate burrow system in this whole thing. Wow. And this is all just natural moss that I collected outside of the house here. Now, are you keeping them cold in this room because you're stimulating breeding or are I, they always I'm, in this room they're always in this room because i can control it and it can stay cooler than the other rooms because over there it barely drops below 78 sure. degrees and these guys don't like it that hot yep yep but i am also trying to get those guys to breed like crazy because i really want more and ever since i bought that group i haven't been able to find it right <laughs> right so this is room number two of what three four uh Three right now, I three? guess technically four. I mean, if you three, count four, the one, three and yeah, a half somewhere around there. It's more like a studio apartment. So we we bought this duplex like 20 years ago, and we knew that I was going to do something like this up here, and it just kind of snowballed. I mean, it literally, <laughs> you know. I mean, we bought the house and we instantly knew, okay, I can do this. I started putting it together and it's been changing over the last 20 years right because it's been a good seven eight years since i've been out here and it's, yep. i can see the changes that we have here but yep. i just want to compliment you on this awesome <laughs> I, rug i love that rug. that <laughs> rug is awesome i mean every herper needs this rug in their herp room and i'm i'm totally gonna copy you on that we'll for to, sure i'll have to find a link <laughs> yeah right right yeah, uh, so, all right, so we've got a fridge for food, I take it? Yep, yep, that's all, you know, worms for the salamanders, yep. freezer for the rats and mice. Uh, and we've got, Gila look monsters. at this beauty. Now, last time I was here, this little Gila was just a tiny little baby. Yep, right about, about that, that big, long. right? Yeah, yeah. So, now he was a baby seven years ago, so he's what, maybe... Eight-ish? Yeah, it's getting up around there. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so you got a Gila up here, yep. dude there, Gila down here. Yep. So you only have three at this I point. I have three Gila's at the moment. Yep. And are they a breeding trio? I have no idea. Oh. I haven't had them. The only way you can tell is by taking them in for ultrasound. Right, right. But so you got them because you love having them, not right. because you wanted to breed them, which is actually rather awesome. Right. I, most of my stuff is I get it because I want to keep it. It's yeah. not, you know, breeding's no. secondary. I mean, yes, I breed some stuff here and there, but breeding isn't my goal. It's keeping it for what it is. Right. Yeah. See, that is so cool. All right, so moving on here. So this is the beaded lizard. Ooh. Yeah, and he's just a little guy. Eventually, this is actually a two-tier cage. So there's a 
hole right there that's going to be uncovered when he gets a little bit bigger. Yep. And this is going to be the burrow area. Oh, that's fantastic. And so you can yep. actually see him burrowing yep. over here. So he can go down here and then this is all blacked out and this is all so that he can have his own burrow area. That's awesome. So these are all the baby cockers that were born last year. Very cool. So they are just hanging out. And I love how you have these, like you basically cut a big hole in the top. Yeah, so what I found with a lot of the pre-made racks is the tubs tend to kind of slide in and out real right. easy. So if you leave the top on and just cut the top open, then it's got a tighter fit and it makes it a little more escape proof. Perfect. Yeah. Good thinking. Yeah, that's a good looking cocker. They yeah. really are pretty. So, before I make this into an hour long video, this we are good. moving on to the next room. Alright. Hey, uh, so just real quick here, uh, <laughs> you got this at Spencer's Gifts, didn't you? Yeah. Like, like years yeah, and like years in 1980, ago. <laughs> fill in the blank, right? Yeah. When I was a kid, I had that very poster on my wall as well. Sometimes I still walk around with the black with light. With the black light, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's just awesome. All right, moving into this room, which is just amazing. Look at this. This is kind of just the, the main living room. I mean, I got fish tanks. This is just a desert terrarium that I'm gonna be setting up with Arizona blondes, tarantulas. Yep, sure. There. But here's the beauty of this. There's no one in, there's nobody in here, is there? Nope, nobody in there yet. So you've basically spent all of this time and effort to design this enclosure, and then you're gonna get somebody to put in there. Yep, yeah, at nine times out of 10, that's what I do. I. I, if I want something, I start off with the enclosure, I get it all ready, and then I get it and, and then put it in And that's afterwards. the way to do it, absolutely. But I went a step further and I made a burrow, and then it's got a peel back, so you can see inside oh, the burrow. look at that. Yeah. Okay, that is ingenious. <laughs> all right, and then down here, you have the coolest little guy. So it's a completely aquatic Sicilian. And I believe the common for this is a Peruvian Sicilian. Right. All right, so you just fed them. What are you feeding them? Beef heart, you said? So I mix it up. I do beef heart. I do blood worms. I do mosquito larvae. I do krill. A variety, you know, that's the key. They're completely blind. I mean, right. they can't see. So everything's all by sense and touch. So you bury the food in the gravel there as it were to give them a kind of a sense of enrichment yeah so he'd be like digging through it just like he would be in the wild right yeah and uh, so now he's found the the cube and he's just sucking it down <laughs> that is something very cool and very unique yeah you don't see many of this species this is a em emily roberts production right here emily. <laughs> You didn't even know he was sitting here, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> I remember when she got these. So this is a lizard discovery. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Emily. He's doing really good, though. When I got him, I mean, he was only like barely the length of the first digit on my pink. Right. I mean, it's just tiny. Right. And again, I love how you have designed these enclosures. I, this is a rattlesnake plant, right? Is that what they call that? I think so. They're fake. But right, yeah. right, but they're... Yeah, it's a it's a type of uh, Tillandsia. Right. Yeah. Right, I see yeah. those in the tropics. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been going for more of uh, the natural feel to stuff instead of, you know, just throwing things in racks. And, right. You know, right. I mean, racks have their use. I, I have some racks. They work great for babies. They work great for, you know, some species, but when at all possible, I usually try and decorate it up. Sure. This was a build-in project, so this is kind of 
it's red because it's kind of supposed to simulate the shelves of like the Australian Outback. Yep. You got that red rock. Right. And then so that's got an olive python in it. And then you got a little snapping turtle over here. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's gonna get fed. Oh yeah, always. <laughs> But look at the attention to detail here, like right down to the plastic lotus and lily pads. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, with baby turtles, especially highly aquatic ones, they always want a lot of cover over the top. Yep. So I try and shade out most of the aquariums so that they have it. Yeah, you really have <laughs> built something remarkably incredible. Well, thank you. It's uh, 20 years in the making, so. <laughs> hey, you know what? I bet you it's never finished. I bet you it's something that oh, yeah. you're going to constantly add to, take away from. It's constantly changing. Right. I mean. The coolest thing about this room is that you've got your lounger here, your TV. Look at all of these DVDs. Wait a minute. we got to take a look at your DVD. You got them. <laughs> look at that. All four of my movies right there. And sometimes I just sit down and, you know, have a marathon. Oh. You know, turpers, herpers, herpers, and then a little horror flick at That the is end. fantastic <laughs> that you are still watching my movies because let me tell you something, I haven't seen my own movies in years. No, oh my. <laughs> How much time do you just spend sitting in your chair, I, hanging out in your herp room? I spend a lot of time up here. Fantastic. Even his wife will tell you, I probably spend way too much time up here. <laughs> Some people have a man cave, I have a man half of a house. There you go, there you go. <laughs> this was a closet that came with the house, and I decided I was going to build an enclosure right into it. <laughs> and so, this is my awesome. walk-in closet enclosure. <laughs> that is just fantastic. currently houses a very large Amazon basin boa. Look at this. So you reappropriated a closet and turned it into this whole big enclosure all for that little lucky boa right down there, which isn't so little. Yeah, and she's running about 70 pounds, so I mean, she's got some weight to her, but I mean, this one, again, was a labor of love because, like, all of these branches, these are all walnut limbs from when the neighbor cut down their tree, and I skinned them all, <laughs> oh, sanded geez. them. I mean, you know, the whole thing is... Lots yeah. of furniture, lots of enrichment. And they use it. Is it I right? Mean, you right. know, there's times where you come up here and she's coiled right across that bow, just hanging out, soaking up the rays. But That is fantastic. So how long did it take you to build this closet? Uh, about... Two days. Two days. Yeah, and most of that was waiting for paint to dry. There you when, go. When I go, I go. You just go I'm full right throttle, in it. right? Yeah. This is the final room of our tour here. Yeah, so this is kind of the main room that I keep all the, the boas and the higher temperature ones in, higher humidity. Uh, so this rack I just got done doing and these are all six foot by 18 by 24s. And that's Uno, he's the male of the boas that I have. Uh, that hypo out there yep, and yep. then the albino I've got an albino motley that I kept out of that litter and I I bred them two years ago and I thought about putting them again together again this year but I just you know once here once there it's perfectly fine you know <laughs> it is so awesome that you're keeping them just for the love of keeping them yeah. without having to think that you need to breed them every year and yeah, and boas. That is so cool. My boas, actually, I won't breed every year. If I do breed them, it's every other year. Sure. Yeah, so this guy, I mean, he actually, he wants to breed. Well, when it comes right down to it, what male doesn't want to breed? Right, right, right. yeah, yeah. It, well, and she's right above him, so. Oh, there <laughs> you go. Like... <laughs> so she's the hot chick that lives in the apartment upstairs. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, and her name is Diva. Diva, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. So over here, you've got a albino carpet. Yep. So this is Darwin's. It's this is a seventy-five twenty-five mix. Okay, I was gonna ask, you know, yeah. what the mix was on it. So it's seventy-five percent Darwin and twenty-five percent Irigine. You're, oh, I got you. Okay, I was gonna suggest coastal, but there it is. Yeah. All right, and then of course over here I see the Angolan. I'm actually gonna. I think they're gonna be ready to breed next year. This this was like. 
I love Angolans, mm -hmm. and I have always tried to get them. And believe it or not, I ended up trading like a crystal ball python for the bear. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> if that's a, well, that was back when you know crystal ball pythons were more expensive. Yeah, so yeah. Because if like, you put that into today's term, you, yeah, uh, right. You scored big. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, either way, I felt like I scored big sure. because it was sure. it was just cool. If you got what you want, you yeah. scored big. But yeah, and they are awesome. I mean, they love sitting out on ledges. They are always out cruising around. I mean, they are just. They're fantastic. So a lot of people that would want to work with Angolans, you know, they kind of have that mindset that they're just another type of ball python, and they are not. No. I mean, they are much more desert. They require much more room, much uh, more a higher, higher basking, temperature. Yep, a higher basking spot I found. Uh, I've got heat mats right over that ledge there, and it runs 95 to 98 degrees, and they will sit under there for... Ever. Right, I which mean, is too hot for a ball python. Yeah, yeah. They like the heat and they like being able to climb around. Sure. And so if anybody was going to get a Angolans, I'd suggest no less than a four foot cage just because of the space requirements. Right, uh, absolutely. All right, so. Enderphyla melanota. I am really starting to, I don't know, to kind of take a second look at Boegas as one of my favorite types of snakes. So when I saw that you had this one here, She's, she's a nightmare. <laughs> so the original thing was I got this as a captive bred, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, hey, it'll be, I can work with it. It'll be tame. Sure. It'll, worst one I've <laughs> ever had. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, we, we both just got sprayed with a, a yep. fine mist of musk. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> she is, wow, she is really well behaved for a Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. But the thing with the Boiga is nine times out of ten, it's a mock strike. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and oh. that's exactly how they were. Yeah. That strike just now, she didn't even close her mouth when she did that. It's all a warning like a bull snake. But, yeah, I mean, it's nine times out of ten, it's, you know. It's, it's all bluff. Bluff. Right, right. But that said... It's not the venom that's not potent. Right. It's the delivery system. That's right. It's underdeveloped. That's right. So it's still, you still should handle them with caution. Yeah. I mean, that's the... Well, they are still rear fanged. Yep. And, and they are definitely venomous. You right. Can, that's enough fun for you, huh? All right. <laughs> back in you go, sweetheart. Anyway, so one of the reasons why I wanted to come over and see this place and actually do a video on this, I know, again, I've been after you for better part it's, of a decade to get over here and film this. It's been a while. <laughs> and you only live an hour away from me. And yeah. Anyway, it's the design of your enclosures and the attention to detail and how much thought and, well, love that you have put into this place. But yeah. it doesn't just stop with the decor. Look at what you've built here. Yeah. So this is my favorite cage at the moment. <laughs> it's, I, I saw this cage somewhere i'm not even sure where but it reminded me of it just had that old backcountry woods kind of and feel it does to it. right and i saw it and for some reason it stuck in my mind and so then i was like well i should just do one for myself <laughs> right so and this is another one where i probably won't have animals in this for you know another three years because the eventual plan is to put a trio of everglades rat snakes in and the first one that I just got this last year is about this, this big right big. now. Yep. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm talking about. You have taken so much attention to detail. This is so much better than some enclosures that are at some of the biggest zoos in the world. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely I mean, I, it is. I try. I mean, you know. I mean, just the light in there. You know, the little pinup girls. It's, it's the little things. You know, right. they take you there. The I mean, jug. Yeah. Yeah, it's all those little, you know, the little details that make the enclosure. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. I mean, really, I want something where I can come in and go, yeah, that looks really nice. <laughs> and it does. Yeah. It does. I, I'm really proud with how this one turned out. It was it was months of going through, oh, hey, I could get this, so I'm going to get that. I mean, you know. It, right. Even, wow. the, even the moonshine jug, it was like... You know, it just needs something a little more. Right. You know? <laughs> Even though it's very decorative, it's also very functional. Right. You know, like the crates double as hides. 
and one that's upside down, and then there's one on top of it where they can sit inside. There's one on the top basking ledge that's right below a heat panel that I've got hooked up to a thermostat. I mean, it's not just about decoration, it's about creating the proper environment for those animals. You know, I, I think people get caught up in the, and I've done it too, I get caught up in, oh hey, I want that species, oh hey, oh look at that, that's cool, let's get that. And we've all been there, we've right. all done it, I mean, but... You know, the longer you do this, the longer you're like, you know, I'd just like to have something that I can sit down and just look at. Yeah. You know? And be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I am. I I enjoy putting this stuff together. I enjoy the decoration part is half the fun for me. Absolutely. You know, and as soon as I'm done, I'm like, well, let's see, what can I do now? I mean, you know, I'm always doing something. <laughs> Well, your attention to detail and your dedication to your animals definitely shines through. Well, I appreciate it. And it's nice to, you know, have people that appreciate it too. Right. One of the things that I really love highlighting in these videos that I do are the people like Brad who take their collections to a whole new level simply because they thoroughly enjoy not only the animals, but building the enclosures for the animals. and. I'm telling you, as you have just seen, Brad has taken this to an entirely new level. So I would just want to thank Brad for having me over. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.